Let's first just take a look at the different ports on it. As we can see the manufacturer, Belkin, on off test button, on battery LED, replace battery, overload. Has a uh, battery compartment lid sitting here. And on the back side we have the four outputs, one with source protection only, which can take up to 1.2 source load. And the other is for the normal rated 650 VA has the phone fax modem protection. These does in fact not connect the unit to a phone line so you can remote operate it. It's only to protect your modem with the same source protection that you have for this output. Communication port to a PC for settings, RS-232 and of course a input plug. So let's get this taken apart. Apparently there's some kind of pull cord here. Ah, okay, that's actually pretty clever. The battery does not sit with any uh, wires, but has these two plugs and an additional cover. I have actually not seen this before. Seems like this is the original battery, as it's rated for the same as the sticker says at the back. Not bad. It actually uh, seems to be a high quality battery from Japan, which is kind of surprising when you think about it, because I would have expected a much cheaper looking battery with less specs on for this unit. So the case here does not seem to have that many screws, except a single one sitting here. So the whole plastic encasing here is just a click system and it seems that the same goes for the PCBs down here, that they just sit with some yeah, click, click in place. That was one. We have the automatic fuse there as well. Then we have a few of those holders here as well. And here we can see the two, uh, which is actually just cable shoe connectors. And if you notice, they actually made these different sizes, so you can not reverse the battery. That's also a small, nice detail. I'm actually quite surprised by such clever design details inside what I thought would be a extremely cheap unit. So let's just have the banana for scale. As we can see, it is extremely small. So it does not seem like it's something that is rebranded as we have the Belkin manufacturer mark sitting here. We can see some kind of controller here, date code 0113, so from 2001 which makes this a good 19 years old. It's good to have some help for all the hard work. So we can see that the source protection for the DSL line is actually nothing but a regular filter. It just has some small fuses a two capacitors and a earth wire, so not exactly what I expected. It's not exactly that protected by the same source protection as you would have inside the unit. The automatic fuse rated for 4 amps, which is uh, a little funny as that is... Okay, that is for the main. You can actually see the color difference between the two brown wires here. So 4 amp fuse for the 640. VA outputs and then the source power able output must have a connector somewhere else. So let's put that aside. So it has a large, what appears to be a 40 pin or is it 32 pin microcontroller, which is a ST part, ST72C340J486. 
It's a little funny with the 486 mark, as I doubt this is a 486 mm. processor. But going back at the input, we have a regular common mode noise choke. We have the input noise capacitors, TVS. Have a relay to uh, turn on and off the output, presumably. And other than that, we have what is probably a small housekeeping power supply. And as April pointed out, we have a tiny little capacitor sitting over here, which is a 470 microfarads at 25 volts, so that has nothing to do with the mains input. Now when we get here to the main inverter, we can see we have two 40 amp fuses sitting in parallel. So we have at least 80 amp flowing in the secondary circuit or the battery charger. And we have... Oh. That seems... Too loose to be good. But apparently no damages on the backside. But that does not feel like it sits in three legs. So it does have some uh, very large heat marks on the PCB down here. It's very brownish compared to all over the PCB in other places. And the small MOSFET here is an IRF8C30. Some nice uh, large blocks here. That's not some small tiny heat sinks, but actually a proper aluminum block. And those are RFP50N05 MOSFETs. Four of those for a, let's see, what could that be? Appears to be a full bridge, or is it actually two in parallel? Actually seems to be four in parallel. Yeah. So that makes little sense. But those are clearly in parallel. Those are in parallel. That's the gates. Gate, gate. And those sits on the whole same lane here. So it is actually a single transistor output with four MOSFETs in parallel. That's kind of unexpected. But overall, the whole PCB design here with all the holes for the respect distances and such. Actually, it is a surprisingly better design than I did expect. You can see here there is even cutouts over the up to couplers between the serial interface and the rest of the controller board. Very nice layout with straight even lines and very little routing. That is actually pretty, pretty neat design. I hope you enjoyed this small teardown. Quite surprising high quality compared to what it appeared to be. And yeah, until next time, see ya. Good night, April.